Hello everyone, this is Ryan Smith. I'm going to go over material instancing today and setting up parent materials, which can be instanced to child materials, which is beneficial because it saves on system resources as well as memory. So to get started here, I'm just going to make a new material, give it a package name, It's always important to stay organized. And it will just be called a basic material. Hit OK. And what we're going to be using is four expressions repeatedly throughout this process, which are basically just uh, substitutions for expressions that we would normally use. For example, texture parameter 2D is the exact same thing as a texture uh, is the exact same thing as a texture sample expression. Just because it's a parameter allows it to be accessed via code or via a uh, material instance. Another one we're going to be using is vector parameter, which you may have used before. It's the exact same thing as a constant 3, except it has an alpha channel and it could also be accessed because it's a parameter. Another example we're going, or another expression we're going to be using is a scalar parameter, which is just a it's just a float input, and it's the same thing as a scalar parameter, or is the exa exact same thing as a uh, constant one, or just a constant expression. And last, we are going to be using a static switch parameter, which you probably haven't used before, and what this does is it's a switch which you check inside of uh, the instancing or the material instance editor and say you have a complex set of expressions coming into slot A and a simpler set of expressions going into slot B depending on which bo whether that box is checked or not uh, depends on which set of expressions flow through the switch so you could turn on rather complex features like uh, specular detail maps or um, I don't know uh, normal details you know just stuff like that if you don't want to use them and, and you want to save the expressions you would leave that unchecked and uh, the the less set of expressions would flow through it instead of the more complex so that's what that's for And what I'm going to be doing right now is just a very basic uh, setup here where we're going to make a diffuse texture and we're going to enable the option for the instanced material to uh, have an adjusted brightness to that diffuse map. So we're going to be using parameter 2D and a scalar parameter. And a multiply node and I brought that in here just by holding M and clicking on the space. It's a little shortcut key. It works with D for divide, A for add, S for subtract, uh, L for linear interp or linear interpolation and then you have your one. If you hold one you get a constant, two gets a constant two vector and so on and so forth. Those are usually the only ones that I use it for. I think P is panner. Yeah, P is panner. Okay, cool. So we plug a parameter 2D in and a scalar parameter in, and we'll just sync it up here. And we'll open the preview window. We'll give this a default value of 1, and we'll just go and grab a texture real quick and assign that default texture. Now, if we go ahead and compile this, it should save to the folder we wanted it to and all we have to do to create an instance for this is to right click the material and create new material instance constant and we could if this package is uncooked and your your target package package is uncooked you could automatically save it right to the package you want in this case warm gun hod cave pieces and the group will be material instances and we'll just call it rock and we'll hit OK. Actually, we'll call it Rock Material. 
and then for uh, organization sake put it INST so you know it's an instance and we'll hit OK and it'll automatically bring this up now what we have here is a couple drop down menus that give you some options on how to use this uh, parent is just your parent material so if you ever want to look it up you can just hit the show generic browser button and it'll show up. Physical material is a it's an actual uh, asset that you can program in sounds to so when the player walks over it it'll play a different noise or you can have different emission effects when you shoot it. And then you have your scalar parameter values and your texture parameter values which are all correspond to the uh, expressions we use in the parent material. So we should have one in scalar and we should have one in texture parameter values. Now notice how it says none here. It's kind of uh, confusing. You might not know exactly what these do. So if you have a lot of scalar parameters and they all say none, you're going to be confused as hell. So in order to change that, we could go back into our uh, parent material and actually give these parameters a name. So this one will be brightness or intensity and this will be diffuse texture and we'll go ahead and compile this again and we'll close this out and reopen it and now they're named I don't know why this one isn't named Alright, there we go. Now, all you have to do to change these, and again, these update in real time because the material is already compiled. We're just changing in uh, different values. So, if you did apply this in the viewport, which we could go ahead and do really quick, just create a box and apply the material to it. If we close out all this junk, we could actually see this change real time. So now all you have to do to change it is hit the checkbox to uh, activate the change and then plug in a new number. And it'll update. You could also deactivate it just by unchecking it. And we could even change the check texture real time if we wanted to by giving it a new texture. And there you go. That's pretty much uh, a very basic example on how to do material instancing. Uh, the next series of this will be more complex techniques as I continue to build the basic shader.